aren't likely to see any Hobara birds pecking through your milk bottle tops this winter, unless, of course, you live in the Middle East. Every year, thousands of them head south from the cold plains of Asia to the warmth of the Arabian sun. But it's a long and lonely journey, especially when you're the hungry falcon's favorite prey. Well, now science is flying to the rescue in the shape of the world's dinkiest tracking device. When it comes to tracking the movements of the Hobara, the falcons of the Middle East are unbeatable. As a child, I remember watching hunters head out into the desert to train their birds for the arrival of the falcon's favorite prey, the humble hobara. Now, the two birds are very similar in size, strength, and agility, which makes them great competitors when they're locked in combat. But the hobara has now become endangered, and unless something is done very quickly to protect them, they're headed for extinction. But it's not only the hunting that's a threat to the Hobara, which is a member of the Bustard family. The more serious problem is the destruction of their breeding grounds in Central Asia to make way for cotton fields. So conservationists such as Abdulaziz have helped set up an avian research center near Abu Dhabi, which is using new technology to save the Hobara. To increase their numbers, there is, we are following two ways, one of them breeding the Habara in captivities and future release. And then the other uh, possible way is uh, to protect their habitat. To protect this bird, we have to know where it goes, where it lives, and which route it takes for migrations. And if they can find these exact migration routes, sanctuaries could be set up for the birds along their flight path. So, a unique project is underway here at the research center to actually track the path of the migrating Hobara across the planet. Now, that's no easy task when they fly a 4,000-mile round trip. It's physically impossible to follow these elusive birds on their migration, so the center is releasing some of its captive Hobara with satellite transmitters on their backs. This device is actually the smallest satellite transmitter in the world. It only weighs 30 grams. It's powerful enough to reach a satellite 900 kilometers above the Earth. But first, you've got to get hold of your Hobara, a proud bird that's not too keen to go on holiday carrying someone else's luggage on its back. You put the transmitter on the back, right. like that, okay. not too low. It must not be too tight because this bird is a young bird. Right. And he will grow. But obviously also not to be too loose that too it falls loose off. that it falls off. It looks a bit like a backpack. Does it in any way slow them down or no, we hurt don't, them? No, we were able to track Barra Bustard on their migration for several thousand kilometers. So it's not a big problem for the bird. And of course he is hooded. If the wood wasn't here, the bird will try to escape. To escape. This bird is ready for release. Then it's off with the bird's hood and it sets off on its perilous journey to the plains of Asia. This is the Hobara nerve center. All the raw satellite data is collected and fed into these computers which then chart on a map the exact migratory routes of all the tagged Hobara. So far 11 birds have been tracked the red line here shows one bird's route from Abu Dhabi across Iran, ending up in Uzbekistan. And the other lines show the winter routes back to the Arabian Peninsula. Knowing the exact migratory paths of the Hobara is a revelation. And as a result, conservation areas have already been set up in places as far afield as Kazakhstan. True, the Hobara is being saved so that the falcon hunts can continue. But these very hunters turned conservationists are now the Hobara's best chance of survival in years to come. And that's all for this week. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.